All right. So, Dan, how's the show going for you so far? It's good. Uh, I had good traffic. A lot of people here for sure. But I'll be honest with you, to take a load off my feet for a few minutes here to talk with you is a welcome pleasure. So, oh, thanks. sure. Well, yeah. That's, the, the last <laughs> guest said the same exact thing. He's like, I'm happy to sit down for a little bit. So. <laughs> i got tennis shoes on and everything, but it's not enough. So uh, what can I say? Yeah, it's been a very busy show and, and a very big show, too, right? A lot of ground to cover. Yeah, yeah. It take you all week to get through the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, so Dan, you're with uh, Robation now, right? So, Correct, so yeah. tell us a little bit about Robation and, and what that is. Sure. So, Robation is a uh, software platform for robotic automation and mm-hmm. digital distribution center manufacturing. This is actually kind of our coming out party. Uh, the company was founded about a year and a half ago. Mm. Spent most of that year and a half uh, developing uh, a very powerful product platform as well as getting the organization together. Mm. And really here at Modex, it's our launch, our coming out party, uh, where we're ready to now take the solution to market. Yeah, absolutely. And, and tell us a little bit about what Robotion does, because it's working on kind of the integration side, communication between solutions, right? Uh, that's just a part of it, you know, mm-hmm. really. So uh, we have what we call the uh, Warehouse Robotics uh, Fulfillment Platform. Mm-hmm. It does a whole bunch of things. Uh, it certainly uh, helps companies to connect, manage, orchestrate, and optimize robotic-oriented workflows in dis- distribution and manufacturing. Mm. Uh, just uh, an interoperability between different right. vendors and different types is critical to that. Just part of it. Uh, but just for example, at our show here at, the, at, at Modex, we're showing three different uh, autonomous mobile robot vendors mm. and two separate uh, robotic picking arms, one for piece picking and one for case picking, all operating in one environment. And, and mm. the work, the, being able to define the workflows across those different domains, if you will, or different process areas regardless of automation better so we've looked around we don't see anybody else doing it on the show floor here this year yeah so i think we have something kind of special yeah yeah absolutely and I, I think that interoperability um is such a such an important key as well right because we see i mean you know talking about the show the massive scale of the show and i mean there's so many automation solutions robotic solutions software solutions uh at, at some point i think it's inevitable that you're going to have you know more than one company solution within your operation right so how do you get those things to work together so tell us a little bit about how you guys are working with these solution providers to make sure that uh you can support them and then support the the users too to be able to bring them together yeah, sure. And, and we're, we're moving to a heterogeneous landscape mm-hmm. the, on the floor of the distribution center and manufacturing shop. There's no question about that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, some people kind of see that. People we're talking to this week of the show, some people get that and are making some moves accordingly. Others, it's kind of a little bit of a wake-up call. I didn't really think about that, you know. Mm. So what do I do after I put in this first piece of automation and I want to add another piece of automation later that does something else? Um, so, you know, part of it is just the connectivity itself to the equipment, and that, for many, is surprisingly hard. Yes. Uh, but nonetheless, it, 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 it can be. We've, we've taken a lot of the mystery out of that. We do, when we work forward with a new partner, we typically get the integration done in one to two days that fast. Oh, wow. We use uh, some AI to uh, help with the mapping from WMS to the automation mm-hmm. layer, our, our layer. Um, <clears throat> So a lot of different things. So first off, you got to just connect the one thing, whatever right. that piece of equipment is, the robots, the uh, uh, goods to person system, whatever. We're very much focused on robots. Uh, but then you've got to manage that workflow across them, and, and mm. not only initially, but over time. And that's a whole different matter. Most companies aren't yet thinking that way because they may only have started one place or just doing some pilots or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but you think, got to think about the long term, about how do I manage this across processing areas and robotic types to begin with, but then just as importantly, how do I deal with changes in processes or vendors or equipment over time? Mm-hmm. Somebody comes out with a better bot from China that's half the price or whatever, just making that up. You want to do it you, if, you, if you've uh, bought in wholly to the robotic vendor's software, how do you add that, that new piece of equipment mm-hmm. From a new vendor seamlessly into the operation, you can't. You have to operate dual systems and throw away what I already bought. The way we do it, um, you can keep what you've got, and we bring in the new robots, uh, and they seamlessly work in one environment. We have a saying that we have people, robots, and uh, humans, uh, people, humans, and our automation working together as one. And that's really what the goal is: having uh, equipment from two different vendors or multiple vendors all working as if they're one system. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's such a, a key thing is just to have it working as that one system, as you said, and I think it's great that you guys are, are on the mission to, to make that happen, um, and I think it's so important, too, because I, I know, you know, from my experience as a warehouse manager and 
you know, working with multiple systems and trying to, you know, juggle between, you know, the, the data that's coming out of this one and the data that's coming out of this one. And, you know, is this one going over? And then all of a sudden, oh, this, this data is not transferring over to this one. And that's why we have an issue. And all those things is, uh, it's just a pain. It's a headache that you don't want to deal with. So being able to bring those all together and have them operate uh, and orchestrated in, in that way, I think is such a, a key factor. So I'm curious, as uh, you mentioned, this is kind of your, your coming out party a little bit here at Modex, right? right. Yeah, so how has the reception been? What, how have uh, attendees kind of uh, reacted to the solution? Yeah, well, you know, you can almost kind of segment that. So there's yeah. been, you know, I'd say a good handful, uh, eight or so, let's say on the first two, two days of the show, Yeah. that understand the problem and understand the, the opportunity and the need mm. and are, came by looking for what we did. Okay. Um, others are starting the automation journey, the robotic automation journey, but haven't really thought it all the way through. Mm. And they're just doing some pro- proof of concepts and some other things. They haven't really thought about the big picture, both in terms of initial implementation, but just as importantly, how do I add stuff over time, as right. we talked about previously. And you can see in, in many of these that we've talked to, kind of a light bulb go off, like, mm. I gotta start thinking about this, because really, everyone's very much focused, or tends to be focused on the hardware, they're not thinking about the software side, or thinking, oh, I just get the software from, software from the automation vendor, yeah. robot vendor. You can, but we talked about some of the limitations and the, you know, it can only take that so far. One of the interesting things that we've uh, uncovered is, we talked talk to several customers, I think, on Monday, that have a global problem. They have various auto- processes and automation they have in place, but every company, country, or region of the world has the ability to source a certain kind of equipment mm. on their own. So right. let's take a kind of consumer goods type of example. Let's take a layer picker robot. Okay, okay. For sure. And there's a process getting stuff to the picking location. The layer picker picks it, maybe puts it on another robot to take it away and take it to the tech, uh, staging or whatever that happens to be. Well, the way Germany, the mm. vendor Germany wants to use is different than the vendor the UK wants to use. Which is different. Right. But they want a platform mm. that allows that process to be defined and all the interface points and everything connected, but you just plug in the type of layer picker, the type of point-to-point robot, or the type of mm. collaborative picking robot you want in your local geography. We had one that said right now, a very prominent high-tech company that they've got eight or nine different um, mobile robots, each with point-to-point connections into the, yeah. uh, the ERP. And it's just, and they, and they keep adding more, and it's right. like, this has got to end, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> uh, so you want to be able, in many cases, sometimes maybe it's a dictate, everyone's going to use this, but we're finding that often there's flexibility by region or by country, but you want to have the same architecture and the same platform that whatever mm. vendor Germany wants to plug in for, for, for this is fine, just as in the United States or anywhere else in the world. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that's really interesting, and it's a great point, too, I mean, about the, the differences in, in how vendors want to use this and how vendors want to uh, go about this, and you could have the same same solution used, you know, in 10 different ways, potentially, and, uh, you know, having the way to, uh, I guess, standardize that, in a sense, and, and bring that together makes makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, it gives you just the flexibility, like I say, uh, technology in this whole automation area is moving so quickly. Um, you don't want to lock yourself in. You want to have maximum flexibility because neither of us can predict mm. seven, what's going to happen five years from now in terms of yeah. vendors and the marketplace, whatever. So it seems to me, and you know, flexibility has a cost, right? And mm. so you, you probably need to invest something to get it. But I think over the long term, rather than five years funding it, now you're in a dead end mm. and having to start kind of back from scratch to build yourself to uh, acquire a platform that allows you that adaptability over time is going to pay itself off in space. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's very interesting. And I guess as we look here, I mean, you guys have just kind of uh, launched and, and come out here a little bit. And I think it's a, a great platform. It's a great thing that you're trying to do, too, with the interoperability, the communication, just making it, I think, at the end of the day, just making it easier for the operators themselves right, to, to deal with all these solutions and, and, you know, get the right solutions and not have to worry about uh, other challenges on the back end that are going to be there. Um, so can I make a quick comment on that? Sure, of course. You talked about the warehouse work. One of the things we've done is we bring, and we've got deep domain expertise coming out of many of the people, including myself, coming out of the WMS business. So mm-hmm. the interface between WMS and the automation layer or our platform layer, there's a lot of nuances to have different ways of doing it, depending on how the WMS was deployed, depending on what mm-hmm. WMS you had, a lot of different things. We may come back to that in a second. But one of the things that we've built is a whole portfolio of execution applications for piece picking, for uh, oh. cluster picking, for uh, 
uh, pick and pass, the zone picking, or case picking, pallet, the punishment plan, or punishment activity, et cetera, mm-hmm. all robot infused, if you will. Yeah. So these aren't the same applications you might get from your WMS today because they've been designed for use of the different ways you can use robotic to do case picking, the different ways you can do robotic to do case picking. Mm-hmm. So we've taken a lot of the folks that are out there doing something similar to what we're doing are kind of doing the connectivity part of it. Mm-hmm. We kind of view that as almost as kind of table stakes. That has to be done. There's no question. And it certainly yeah. has taken too long, too much time, too much uh, expense today, and too long, too long of a time to value. That's one of the things mm-hmm. we're finding from pilots, proof of concepts, and even the actual deployments. It's just taking too long to get up to speed of where you're really get, you're getting the payback. Um, so that, you know, we believe that connectivity is the starting point, mm-hmm. but we take it more end to end and that includes some of those, you know, execution applications I just referenced. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's great to note and, and great to call out to as well. And I think it's so important to be able to, to have those execution applications in place and, and be able to handle those different types of situations. And, and ultimately, as we, we said, kind of make the, the worker's life easier at the end of the day, the, the warehouse manager's uh, life easier too as well, less to, to worry about, less headaches, right? Yeah. And just one more point on that, the, the, the user's experience. All of those different applications I talked about have the exact same interface, look and feel, et cetera. So, mm. so as you, uh, it gives you flexibility to move workers around either yeah. permanently or as ad hoc as needed because they go from one application to the other and it looks just like the other application that mm. they used to do it. Right. So it's going to get people up to speed a lot quicker. Yeah, and I think that's a fantastic thing. So very interesting what you guys are doing at Robotion, Dan, and I appreciate you coming by and, and talking to us. If people want to learn more about the solution, what's the best way to do that? Well, certainly, if they're still here at the show uh, tomorrow, or the rest of today or tomorrow, they can visit us at booth C thirty two ninety seven. We'd love to see you there. We're doing this again live demos on the show floor. So what I'm mm-hmm. talking about here, you're going to be able to see displayed. And then second, you know, Robotion, which is robotion.com. Uh, there's a a lot of information there and the ability to con- the request to contact or a demo to see what we're doing. Love to, love to hear from everybody. All right, fantastic. And we're looking to see how uh, Robotion continues to grow and evolve as well and, and do a great service for the industry. So thanks so much for stopping by, Dan. Kevin, great conversation. It's always looking forward to doing it again soon. Absolutely. A pleasure to see you. Thanks. thanks All right. So thank you, sir. You too.